Welcome to Answering God's Call. I'm your host, Stanley Ermov. Our theme for this show is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, which says, We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In this show, we invite priests and religious to share the journey of their call to the consecrated life and their seen and unseen dedication to God in the hope that by listening to their story, we may come to realize the importance of putting God first in our lives. Our guest today is Father Timothy Thompson. Now, Father Thompson has had many responsibilities as a priest, but currently he's the director of the Jesuit Retreat House at Trinidad Farm. Retreat, yeah, yeah. that's right. Retreat Good. Center. Retreat Center okay. at Trinidad Farm. Welcome, Father Thompson. Thank you. Good. I'd like to start by asking you to tell us of your college or, or your formative world that you grew up, your parents, siblings, uh, friends, environment, and education up to about maybe mid-teenage years. Okay. Well, let's see, I was born in a, a small town, well, a city in the Saint called St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, family, just the one brother, one sister, but my Family had all been there. All my great grandparents are buried in that same city. So are you the youngest? I'm in the middle. Right uh, in the middle. My older brother who has passed away, a younger okay. sister. Who, okay. Uh, and uh, so we grew up in a, a Catholic family uh, in the, a cathedral parish. We were it was a, a diocese of St. Joseph, now merged with Kansas City. Um, went to the cathedral school, uh, taught by the Benedictine sisters. Uh, they had been there for a long time, too. My third mm -hmm. grade teacher also taught my father. Uh, so, uh, uh, And then I went to high school to a, a Christian Brothers school, all boys, uh, a s small school, maybe about 250. Um, so everybody knew everyone else pretty well. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was a fairly Catholic uh, city, not certain, not, uh, not entirely so, obviously, but... Uh, it had been founded by a French uh, fur trader named Joseph Rubidoux. Okay. So and that's where it got its, <clears throat> its, okay. its origin. Uh, I was active in, in activities, not so much in sports, but other activities in, uh, in high school. Uh, then after high school, I went to university for a year, where same place my brother was attending at the time, mm. uh, at Notre Dame. I was there for a year. Um, and then, for some reason or another, I felt called to enter the Jesuits. Now, I had okay. never really met a Jesuit before. Okay, uh, so what age is this? Well, this is uh, 18. All right, and what so was I, the inspiration why you felt called? Well, uh, Having I, not met a Jesuit or anything. Yeah, it, it's really, I, I really can't explain. It, it's something that I just experienced it. Well, okay. uh, this is what I'm called to do. Okay. Uh, I, I can't really, I really hadn't talked with anybody about it beforehand. It's something that almost just, just came to me. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and it wasn't, you might say it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but I felt that okay. I was called to do it. Uh, oh, so I, could could I, we explore that not wanting to do? <laughs> well, part, there were other... not too personal? <laughs> No, it, it's not too, per it's just an experience I had. I, and I've had it, and I think we all do it at times. There are mm. things we, we want to do, but we, there are other things we are called to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure parents have that experience in sure. raising a family. And, yeah. uh, okay. uh, but it was just uh, one of the things I think that uh, <clears throat> was instrumental in my being open to this sort of thing was attending Mass almost daily, uh, there in the, uh, the residence hall where I was living, it was, uh, there was a mass celebrated in a small chapel for mm. many students who wanted to come. And there was, this, there was a small group uh, that came to mass every day. Yeah. Uh, and so, and this was before the Vatican Council. Mass was in, in Latin. And, uh, okay, good stuff. So, uh, well, I remember a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I think that was something, that was sort of instrumental yeah. uh, uh, in... Uh, 
in my, my call, my vocation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And your brother and sister, are you aware if they had any leaning towards religious life or No, priesthood? I don't think so. My no. brother got married right out of uh, university okay. with, to a girl he had been going with since he was a okay. freshman, I think, of high right. school. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and my sister, they, uh, now both my, uh, let's see, what, brother and brother-in-law has a, a sister who is religious. Mm. Uh, they're religious in the family, but neither my brother, brother nor sister, yeah. I think, uh, really considered a vocation. Yeah, any, any influence from your parents towards that vocation that you could um, think of? Or? No, not really. I think they were kind of surprised. Oh, really? <laughs> any objection? No, no, not <coughs> like the pleasantly surprised, you might say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And friends? Uh, you had good friends in, in, from college? or Well, not education? so many in college. I, I, it was just a, a boarding school. We were from all over. Uh, and it was just, I was just there for a year. So I never really dealt, mm -hmm. felt any deep friends at, at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, good friends from high school, I guess, who were not, not terribly surprised uh, okay. that I did. That okay. I joined. Yeah. Okay, you were the quiet one, always. Well, you were a thinker. Well, a, a he was quiet. trying as a thinker. Well, quiet anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Excellent. Okay. Um, any significant challenges once you, you kind of like tune in to say, all right, maybe this is what God is calling, calling me to, even though that was maybe not your first thought. But did any challenges present themselves in, in your path in terms of becoming a priest? as you can recall? Well, it was kind of a tumultuous time because I was, <clears throat> I entered the, the, the novitiate in, what, 1957, but as we went through, the Second Vatican Council came along, and there were a lot of changes that were introduced, um, which I all, you know, might say agreed with or fell into line with, but uh, there, were, there were other people in the, in the community, in the, uh, in the okay. seminary, who had some difficulty with that, and there was... Uh, there were people who, you know, who left. I mean, good friends who who left, and I was certainly saddened by that, and sort of questioned, you know, my own my own vocation. But I always found it uh, it was it was still there. You might say I could I was still in touch with it for the call. Fundamental changes coming out of the council. Well, that impacted these people, or well. No, no, I mean, it was the sort of the external changes, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. moving mass into to English, right. uh, and then facing relaxing the congregation, some of the, facing the congregation, those sort of okay. things that, that, that didn't... Well, that was that, a stir at the time. I, I think it was a stir in Belize, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. It, you know? it wasn't, uh, I think it varied from one place to another, and sure. we were in the seminary, and that was sort of the... Uh, you know, okay. There was no resistance. I, I don't think you, you had seminary. entered the seminary already when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, in fact, I remember. I think it was in the issue when they announced that uh, uh, <clears throat> Pope John had called the Vatican Council. That was a great, great mm. surprise. Uh, mm. so everybody was sort of anxious. Uh, and later, in you might say, in when I several years later, when I was in theology, why there was the, some of the professors were. Sort of well, they they weren't. I say keeping up to date with everything that had been okay. done and said and written in the council. So yeah. it was a bit of a, a confusing time for some of them, okay. uh, and we experienced that. Uh, All right. So so that that affected your tra training in any fundamental way or, or any significant way, or it was just there in the background. Sort of no, I think it was the, the uh, seminar it was much more open than it had been in the past. I mean, for example, when I, <clears throat> I started theology, it, we, it, uh, the theologate had been out in the middle of Kansas in a small town, uh, pretty much isolated from everything. And then I began when the first year when they had moved into, into a large, into St. Louis. And so we were, uh, Really, not. So, we, are, we were part of the university uh, and living pretty much on the campus of the university, and that was a, a big, a big change for for those who had been out in, in the middle of Kansas. Okay. But for us, I had just come from Belize to go up there, and it was uh, it was sort of a, a quite a pleasant experience uh, to be on, yeah. on the university campus. A lot more oh. life and activity. So, uh, how come you had come from Belize? Uh, well, I had. Part of our training, we had two years of novitiate, two years of sort of 
general liberal studies, three years of philosophy. So I'd been in the seminary for seven years, and then I was assigned to come to Belize for three years, okay. and that's when I met you. Oh, that's right. when you came as a scholastic? As a scholastic, yes. All oh, right, yeah. I remember those days, yeah. Yes. With um, O'Toole. Oh, Mr. O'Toole, yeah. Yes, Mr. O'Toole. Yeah. And uh, a couple of other guys, yeah. Miller. Yeah, Clyde Miller. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, good Jim days. Costello. Costello, yeah. yeah. Oh, I had quite an episode with Costello. <laughs> I used to be so mischievous. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> and you, know, you kind of like fell in love and believes why you, you came yeah. back, or you, yeah. was that? Part of your choice to come back yeah, here? Yeah, that was, that was certainly my choice. Yeah. Part of your choice, yeah. okay. Yeah. After right. theology and ordination, I did okay. some special studies yeah. specifically to be able to come back to Belize yeah. and work in education. Yeah. So That's where you discovered the hammock. Yes. In Belize and right. look forward to resting <laughs> on the veranda. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's yes. now being renovated. You see, <laughs> things start in Belize, okay. All right, so I think you said yesterday that um, you were in training for like 13 years, mm -hmm. and, and all that went pretty smoothly, no, no misgivings about your call or anything? No, not time. really. It was well, smooth sailing yeah. for you and just getting deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. What, what part of the 13 years would you say was, was most influential in, in, in terms of your deepening of your relationship? With God. Well, it was probably when I was here teaching. Oh, really? Uh, that was the real challenge. I mean, I had okay. never been in a classroom before. Now we're getting to the Here's word challenge. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, it, I'm coming from a different country okay. uh, in a different educational system. Yeah. Uh, I had to learn my pounds, shillings, and pence. Um, At that time, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and so there were all kinds of challenges. And, you know, understanding... Uh, uh, the the students with their Creole and everything that was yeah, you uh, probably discovered mosquitoes for the first yes, time. I, well, no, I'd you, you experienced had, them before. You but, had uh, good. but the sand flies were new. Oh, oh shucks! Are they still around? <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. Never left. No, no. Yeah, but we they're, were they're much fewer now than they yeah, were. Yeah, we were somewhere, and they, 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 they told me you know, between five and six, they still come down. It's mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. Something happens. Yeah. Good. That's perfect. All right. But um. Um, besides, besides your, your teaching, did you do any outreach work? I remember when we, we spoke with Father Brian, and Father Brian says part of the training was outreach work, so he used to work in the, in the, in the slums, if you like, of, of New York and that Did mm -hmm. you have any kind of experience like that? At that time, no, that was, he, Brian came much after myself. We, okay. well, one, uh, part of our novation training was to work in a hospital. Uh, All right. And it was, uh. In a hospital for the the, the poor people in in mm. St. Louis, and so just working more as uh, sort of an orderly, you might say, just doing uh, menial jobs. Menial stuff. Yeah. How, yeah. For how long was that? That was that was for about six weeks, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So did that, that was, speak to you? Pardon? Did that experience speak to you at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I got to see another side of life that I had never seen before, and I think mm. that was touched and had oh. moved me and sort of encouraged me and what. Yeah. what we were doing, and especially that came pretty much at the same time as the Vatican Council, when we were told oh, to right. go out and reach out to people, especially yeah. the, the poor and the, the disadvantaged. Okay. So that was, yeah, that's going back a, a ways, but uh, yeah. so. Okay, yeah. okay, good. And then at, at the time of your ordination, did you, did you recall anything particularly that touched you? Well, I mean, the whole, I mean, being able to celebrate the Eucharist now, I mean, attending the Eucharist every, every day for, sure. you know, many, many, many years, and finally being able there to preside, that was a little bit intimidating at, at first, uh, just making sure you did everything correctly. But by that time, the Mass was in English, and I didn't have to worry about all of the, the Latin rubrics and everything, so that, mm. that made it much, much mm. more... Uh, accommodating uh, to yeah. do it that way. So I think the, just being able to celebrate and then getting up before, a, you know, a parish congregation uh, uh, for the first time, and, uh, mm. for a few times, several times, and many times, I guess, uh, that was always new and you knew. Homilies. Homilies, yes. Homilies In those days, challenge. you didn't have the assistance that you could get no, on the internet. No, you get, uh, well, yeah, there was no internet yeah. or anything no, like no, that. So you had to. Uh, and you know you had to sort of scramble, and at, at that time too, the 
you know, there were a lot more developments in Scripture and deeper insights into what the uh, what the Gospels were really about. An awful lot being written uh, on that topic and disagreements on this subject mm-hmm. and that. Uh, okay. So it, it was a, it was a real challenge to uh, to get uh, <clears throat> to. Uh, you know, have a homily. I mean, before it was always called a sermon, yeah. uh, and you were preaching to the crowd. Uh, to when the did that change? Well, I think that came after the, Vatican the Second Council. Vatican Council. Okay. And all right, now we're trying to. And there was much more focus on on scripture uh, after the yeah. after the council than before. It was more on you might say the the catechism rather than getting so, right to the so did it move from <laughs> preaching to teaching you would say or well or not necessarily not exactly teaching uh, although that's certainly part of it uh, but you might say explaining uh, okay. and getting trying to get the people in, involved in it and using sort of practical everyday examples that you could use to mm. to illustrate uh, okay. you know how the scripture applies to us today okay. uh, that's that's, um, that's still the challenge, certainly. Okay, so we have to go to our break, but we'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Answering God's Call. We are with Father Thompson here as our guest. Right. How many years have you been a priest, Father Thompson? I was ordained in 1970. So wow. that's 30, 30 plus 19, 40, 49 years. 49. Oh, all right. Okay. What, what month? June. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be um, 48 years married in, in May. Very so good. Congratulations. Right. Yeah, we are within the same you know, age group. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, how many responsibilities have you had as a priest in all those 49 years? And, and the ones that were most challenging, the ones that were most you know, um, leading to your greater spirituality, if you wish. Well, most of, almost all of the time has been here in Belize oh, really? and at yeah. St. John's College. Uh, and I've sort of run through the, okay. the list of offices from, I got started, you might say, I'm not sure whether it was the bottom or the top, but I was president. Uh, of what? Of St. John's College. How could that possibly be the bottom? Well, you took over <laughs> from Father Weber? No, from Father Short. Short, okay. At and that time, was after you. well, the, the the Jesuit superior was sort of, at that time, was automatically the president of the college. But Father Short had never been uh, at St. John's College and felt kind of overwhelmed or uh, by the job. And I was just finishing some studies, and he asked me to take over from him. Mm-hmm. So that was, uh, that was a challenge from the very yeah. beginning. So what year was that? Uh, 1973. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, oh, I, I, I've been back from studying already. Yeah. Okay. And you, you, you taught uh, in the classroom. You taught me math. Yes. What else? That was a, as a scholastic, right? Before yeah. then. And, yeah. uh, well, then uh, also I was at one time the the headmaster had to leave for I think health reasons. So I was. I took over because it was sort of in the middle of the year. I took over as headmaster too because there was nobody mm-hmm. to to replace me. And then we we got things a little better organized, you might say. And uh, so I uh, turned over the well. We had a board, and they chose. I resigned as president, and they got chosen new president. And I continued for a few years as the uh, headmaster. And then I had one more year of what we call tertianship. It's a, a, th- a Sort of the the final year after you've been ordained and working for a while, then we come back for a, a final year of formation, and I <clears throat> had the uh, advantage of doing that in Ireland. That was 19, okay. 1980 to eighty one. Okay. So, uh, so that, you requested that, or you were assigned? No, I requested. Well, I was I was assigned to do tertianship, and I, okay. there were various choices, and yeah. uh, I chose okay. to go to yeah, Ireland. Choice. So uh, good. That was part of the 13 years of training. Well, it was no, it was a 14th year, 14th a 10 year, year later. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, ten, about 10 years after our nation. Right. And the, your assignment there was basically as what? Well, or it was or? basically, um, well, we made a 30 day retreat uh, in the preparation for that, studying the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius and uh, 
a couple of months of, of oh the long form yes oh, in 30 wow, days that's, that's yeah. great i did the short form <coughs> you which did was good too. okay yeah. Yeah. good <clears throat> and then uh going to different places to direct retreats on an individual basis not giving yeah. preached retreats but uh directing individuals and i i went to a, a place in england uh called saint binos it's uh out actually it's in it's in wales but uh um and it's but it's a retreat center and i was just one of the several priests who were yeah. directing retreats there so okay. uh, so that's so, uh, so not only were you exposed to punching shillings on pitch <laughs> but though you were getting british humor how did yes, you find oh, that yeah. <laughs> oh i found it very you know, very good yeah it yeah. can be rather droll and uh Subtle in some of their jokes. When I was studying in England, I used to live in a hostel. Oh. I used to play football. Oh, all right. And, um, you know, soccer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was playing on the left wing because I was very fast. But being in front of the goal is a totally different story. I mean, it's, you, you got to see everything at the same time. So yeah. I used to mess up plays, right? <laughs> And after every game, you had this Irish guy that would write an article about your performance, and uh -huh. he would go down name by name, and he'd come to Stanley, and he would say, um, tries very hard. <laughs> In fact, very trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I decided. Yeah. I, I better go in defense. I have a single place there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I found their humor just, just in, incredible. I, I love it, actually, uh -huh. because they could, they could twist you around without you. Oh, yes, yes. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. And a uh, uh, Catholic, very Catholic environment at the time, too. So that, that must have been mm -hmm. adding to your spirituality. Yeah, yeah very yeah. much. Saying so. mass yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I was usually with a, a place where there were several priests, okay. uh, and so not everyone said Mass every day, yeah. so attending Mass or celebrating yeah. Mass together, yeah. 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 And with some very, very talented and experienced people, too, and yeah. so I learned, yeah. uh, learned yeah. a lot yeah. that way, yeah. yeah um, we got married or uh, officiated by an um, Irish priest. Oh. I used to say Mass at the church where I'd go, and he would say, look, if I can't give a homily in two minutes, I don't give it. Mm. I said, okay, fine. Okay. That, that sounds good, good for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say in two minutes, huh? Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then back in Belief, um, you know, you're now transitioning into the... Oh, sorry, I was going to ask you too. Were you ever involved in the extension department? Well, that's what I did when I came back yes, from I kind of Ireland. I, I was saw director there, of extension. On Regent Street? Yeah, well, we actually, we moved from Hyde's Lane and New Road yeah. over to okay. Regent Street. And that's Hyde's a, Lane, okay. That's another... That's another so, story. I remember well, at one time you were at the, what we call the bridge foot. That yeah, big building right uh, yeah, on the there, bridge there. Yeah. That was on the Stoke, if I remember, Father Stoke. Yes, uh, I taught there as a scholastic and uh, sometimes in okay. uh, Mr. Mulatto's building oh, there. Right. Uh, there yeah, at the bridge yeah, foot. That's about, exactly. Then we moved to Hyde's Lane uh, okay. and then over to Regent Street. Okay. And there was a rather touching story because that uh, building was, uh, was, uh, being sold at a bankruptcy auction. I remember that's and, the Regent Street uh, Mill Insurance Company. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we went, uh, Father Weber was back in charge at that time. We went uh, to the auction and okay. told the people there that, you know, we wanted to buy it for extension. <clears throat> yeah. And they didn't bid. Nobody bid? Only we got that on the first bid. Oh, really? So and it was they, well attended? Yeah, there were some rather wealthy people there, okay. um, but uh, when they found out what we wanted it for. So how did you get the message across to everybody that went there to bid? Well, they just said, what are you doing here? Oh, okay. <laughs> said, well, we want it for extension. Yeah, that was adult education too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was something. Yeah, yeah there was a challenge very, very touching yeah. too. But it was, there were but, you know, some prominent businessmen uh, yeah. there looking for the building, but sure. they yeah. let us have it at the rock bottom price, you might say. Wow. I think the auctioneer was disappointed, but... Uh. Uh, well, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even in the um, extension department, reaching out to adult, to adults, and you, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, that must have been... You know, that, that requires a certain disposition to teach, I would imagine. Yeah. And you yeah. were a teacher there, or you were the Well, I was the director for about 10 years. Okay. That's from about 1980 to 1990. Yeah. Did you actually teach as well? Uh, well, I was teaching during the day in the junior college, six. Oh, form, okay. But not at, not at Extension. Extension was entirely for the evening. Huh? Yeah, that was after, entirely. After I, was, I was the director of it. Uh, uh, okay. Used to 
open up and lock up and yeah, okay. watch the doors. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that had to register. close after a while, unfortunately. Yes. Um, the building is still there. The building is Not still used. there. No, that's sad, though. Uh, uh, well, it was because, you know, they, we were running it, but students had to pay. And then when the government finally got into the evening yeah. division, they were offering free uh, classes uh, uh, at uh, okay. uh, Gwen Liz, yeah. I think, uh, and other places. And so our enrollment dropped way down. And so we had mm. to simply let the sure. others yeah, yeah, take yeah, care of it. Um, there's yeah. a lot of good work that came out of that. Yeah, I still meet well people educated. on the street that, you know, oh, say, yeah. oh, I remember Absolutely. you from Extension. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. a, yeah. that's a yeah. pleasant experience. Yeah, I remember you too from Extension. We used to live a little bit farther down the road. Yeah, you. yeah. And you used to pass yeah. so many times. Okay. All right. So let, let's make a little shift here, Father. So we've been talking about your journey. You know, to, to the call, your priesthood, um, including your responsibilities as a priest. Uh, what I would refer to as your visible life of dedication to God. This is what I, we all see, you know, we on the sidewalk, so to speak. <clears throat> and I would like to take our conversation deeper by focusing on your inner life of dedication to God. But first, I would like to say a few words to our audience. Okay. From time to time, I'll be using the word intimacy or variations of it. And my intended meaning is the spiritual oneness we experience in a relationship of deep mutual trust and friendship, in this case, with God. Now, a helpful way to understand the meaning of intimacy is by the phrase, into me see, which if we say fast, you know, if you say fast enough, sounds like intimacy, but intimacy is what it is. I mean, we're sharing our inner self. In St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 30 to 31, Jesus tells us that the first great commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. In other words, love God totally in everything, which is a sign of true intimacy and by implication, our first purpose in life. And in John 17, 3, Jesus said in his prayer, the night before he sacrificed his life to redeem us, eternal life is knowing you, Father. He's praying to God, his Father. Eternal life is knowing you, Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So in other words, heaven, if I understand this right, heaven will be all about getting to know God intimately. So Father Thompson, could you share with us how important it is in your life to have an intimate relationship with God, and why? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, that saying from Mark reminds me of sort of a, a, one of the basic principles of, you might say, Jesuit or Ignatian spirituality, it's finding God in all things. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're looking for God's presence. It, it's in the beauty of creation, in the complexity of things, and the love for one another, and so, when you're looking for when you're looking for God, um, and then you do. I think you you find God in, in many many different uh, ways, aspects uh, of life, experiences, and so uh, what you said. We uh, loving God. Then there are there are so many you might say good things out there that are you know it it can if you look I think deeply it it draws you to God uh, okay. so. Uh, but that, you know, trying to, you might say, actively seeking God in all things, not just in prayer, not just in solitude or anything, but in everyday life, uh, uh, whatever it might be. I think that's, yeah. that's one way to begin. Right. And you're not only talking generically, you're talking for yourself as well. Yeah. This is your yeah, driver. This is what, yeah, this, this is, is what, what impels you. Yeah. I mean, right. like the... Uh, <clears throat> Palatine say that the, yeah. the love of Christ impels us, and uh, sure. seeking God, yes. uh, I think, can Im okay. impel you uh, right. to, uh, you know, to once you you are actively aware of, of God's presence and then and, and His goodness, then I think you're drawn drawn closer to God. Okay. Why would you say that's important, though? Suppose I would say, well, that song's good. That's for you, Father. Not for me. Important for you as a priest, not important for me. Why would you say that's important? 
Well, I think for some people, God is, is very remote, uh, abstract, uh, and might say, and withdrawn from the world. And I, I don't think that, that gets you anywhere. Uh, sure. it, it just sim- leads to, you might say, dismissing God from the world. And if you're, if you're in, in seeking God, um, you become more aware, I think, of, of God's presence uh, in the world and how God is acting in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it all, it, it, and it also has to be, I think, through Jesus uh, and through the life of, of Christ. Uh, and that it, I think it, it, well, it, it led me more to the, to the study and the, and the reading and the understanding, appreciation of, of the Gospels. Mm-hmm. And that can certainly lead you to, to prayer uh, when, you, when you try to emphasize, emp- emphasize uh, empathize uh, with, with Jesus in his many sort of everyday situations, mm-hmm. the suffering that he underwent, okay. the frustrations he must have experienced. Uh, so this, uh, it's another aspect of, <clears throat> of Jesuit spirituality we talk we speak of contemplation in action. Uh, so you're you're a contemplative, but you're not withdrawn from from the world. Okay. Uh, you're out there actively engaged in uh, in work, in education, working with young people, with the the kids that came to extension, for example, and see some of their struggles, uh, <clears throat> and you you begin to. Contemplate, uh, just be uh, aware of, of God's presence in in their lives, or maybe the the need that they have for God's presence in their lives. Okay, so you could say Ignatian spirituality in everything seek God, mm-hmm. but in everything it makes sense to seek God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that there's a there's a two way flow. You know, we're mm-hmm. seeing, a teen scripture says the more you seek God, the more He seeks you. Uh-huh. So the more we see, the more we feel the effect of God in our daily life in helping us meet, mm-hmm. which is why it's so important. Yeah, it's a two-way yeah. street. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. we have to go to another break. For okay, so, okay. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Answering God's Call. Our guest today is Father Tim Thompson. Okay, Father, our our, our next question. We were getting into this question, and I was asking, when did your intimate relationship with God start? And do you believe you would have become a priest without that relationship? Well, you know, it's sort of like a seed that's planted. I mean, it grows slowly, uh, and you're not sure when it's underground whether it's really sprouting or not. And I, I think the, you know, the relationship with God is something that, that grows, and then it it maybe pops through when you see that okay, it's 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 there. Uh, so I, I can't say just when it's it started. Uh, you you can't I, identify like an I, age or a I time in your life. No, not really. I, I think okay. it was there, and I was it was growing. I mean, you know, I served masses uh, in grade school and. Uh, you know, before you became a priest, you know, the time would call now to becoming a priest. That that was pivotal, if you like, in your life. Well, uh, again, that as you know, in a religious life, we begin with the emphasis is not so much on immediately on on priesthood, but just on becoming a, a religious, becoming okay. a Jesuit. So the first couple of years of, of novitiate, it's on. Uh, you know, on the Jesuit spirituality, the spiritual exercises, oh, right. developing your own relationship with God uh, through prayer, and <clears throat> but the the emphasis at the beginning is is not not simply on you're preparing to be a priest. I mean, you're, All right. you're becoming a, a member of the Society of Jesus, okay. and, and that I, could go anywhere. Yes, there okay. are there are brothers who don't get ordained, uh, okay. uh, who serve it, but most. Uh, most people enter with uh, an intention of one one state or, or the other, although sure. some are, as we say, indifferent. Okay. Uh, the two so options being what? Being a brother being, or being, being a, a priest? Being a brother or okay. being a priest, yeah. I mean, there is 
some of the older people remember yeah. Brother Jake, who was uh, oh, yeah. instrumental in the Boy yeah. Scout movement. Sure, sure. That was a person of that. Big number in Belize. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he was. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, and would uh, some enter just to try out? Not well, likely. Well, there are nowadays. Yes, there are some. We say indifferent. Uh, they that's they haven't made their choice. They will make the mm. choice in the process of the. Of, uh, mm -hmm. of the novitiate uh, experience. Okay, but what was your disposition when you yeah. entered? You well, I us. think it was, uh, again, it, it was for the priesthood, yes, right. yeah. From day uh, one? From day one, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, again, as I said, the emphasis was not on that uh, at, at the beginning. It was more just being integrated into the uh, into the whole sure. society of Jesus. In, in of terms the, of your training and development. Yeah. yeah, but then it, it takes a more, you might say, academic turn when it uh, comes to being a, a priest mm -hmm. because of the theological, philosophical studies that are, are required. Uh, so it, it, you know, it, it has that emphasis okay. uh, from early on. <clears throat> so growing up, you kind of like felt, well, there was a pull, there was a draw. You couldn't identify exactly when it happened. But it was more, it I think, it was more a draw to the religious life. Uh, whether it would, uh, and I, I wasn't familiar with the Jesuit brothers or anything before I began, mm. so mm. that, that sort of automatically included okay. the, the priesthood. So being taught uh, by Benedictine nuns, I mean, why, why do you think you weren't drawn to being a Benedictine priest? Benedictine well, that was, or whatever that uh, I really don't know, and I was taught oh. by the Christian brothers, uh, okay. uh, which oh, is yeah. an order so, of, of brothers yeah. who it's just amazing. teach, there are no, no Christian brothers who are priests or ordained. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I really, I, I can't explain why. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's the same God, huh? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and it's something is sort of growing within you, and you're maybe not really fully aware of it yeah. until uh, okay. uh, it develops a All little right. bit more. Good. Uh, so, what, the matter about the three years of Ignatian, Influence is the first three years. Is that what you're saying? Well, it, it's all through the all oh, sure. through the training. Okay. The first two years, yeah. uh, which we call novitiate, yeah. uh, is specifically focused yeah. on on okay. your own, your spiritual development within the Jesuit community. Right. Uh, but you know, maybe I'm not getting it too well. But I, I see priesthood, you know, set of responsibilities. I see relationship with God. You know, I kind of equate it to myself. I, I married relationship with mm -hmm. God. Once a relationship with God started in my marriage, my marriage just took off. Before that, lots of struggles. So in mm -hmm. the priesthood now, you know, it, 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 are they one and the same? Are they synony synonymous, if you like? No, I don't think relationship with God. So let's, not, let's focus on the relationship with God. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, they're not, certainly not synonymous, but I don't think you can be a priest without a relationship. Okay. I mean, it's, a, it's an essential yeah. uh, to have that relationship with God. Okay. And that's what... So, so much of what you're doing is, uh, you know, you might say promoting and assisting and helping people in, in growing in their own relationship yeah. with God. So you can't, you can't do the, the priesthood without the relationship with sure. God, certainly. But it, it takes a different focus. I mean, it's not just, it's not like being a contemplative, like a Trappist okay. who is um, a monk who is, you know, yeah. living a very contemplative life, um, yeah. maybe not with, with very little contact in, outside the, uh, their, their community. Ours is what we call an, an active order, that is we're in, engaged in various works, all kinds of works, uh, uh, in sort of Good. no limit really to the kind of things that Jesuits have done. So, and for me personally, uh, you know, that uh, teaching certainly is <clears throat> You know, you're you're in touch with people. You're trying to to help them, and, and not just to learn the particular subject, but uh, to develop an awareness of God in their own lives. Uh, oftentimes, just by your example, uh, and and you know, occasional uh, regular prayers, you might say, in the classroom or something like that, and retreats in the school. But uh, uh, you so, can't can't do the yeah. can't do the priesthood without the relationship with God. Okay. Now, when or could you could you identify with when the desire for that focus may have started in your life? Which I'm saying just just you know marriage that that's taken my understanding and appreciation of marriage in the context of what God desires 
in my status in life, married person, to a new level? Well, I, again, I don't, just float I don't out of your see. I just don't see it happening in but level oh, that with, with okay. jumps or steps. I mean, it's sort of a. I go up a ramp rather than steps. Yeah. Uh, right. But let's say <laughs> you're teaching math. Mm -hmm. How do you influence people to turn to God teaching math? Well, you can try to point out some of the complexities and wonders, and you know how you know all of the. You might say, well, if, if, you, if you like mathematics. <laughs> I know you love math. <laughs> yeah. You taught me math but for many if, years. If, you know, some of the, the splendors and the wonders and how it's uh, really, really okay. amazing uh, that it's, it's all there and uh, part of God's creation. And to just uh, to have a deeper appreciation of that gives you a deeper appreciation of, of all of creation and of the, of the intellectual life of how wonderful, how can... How did anybody ever come up with this? You know, oh. it seems so, oh. so complicated okay. or so complex, and they, they proved it. <laughs> okay, so, so there, you there first of all see God, the elements of God in the subject, and therefore when you're teaching the likes of me, you're seeing me, God, you're a potential convert. Yeah. That's how yeah. you look at your students? Yeah. Well, not convert. Well, I mean, just you know. <laughs> try to appreciate it yourself, yeah. uh, and you'll see the... And the, the spiritual element it. too. And see the depth of it, of it all. Yeah. yeah. Not only of math, but, it, but of God oh, in yeah. math. Yes, and there are other oh subjects gosh. that are much more uh, oh, yeah. much <laughs> conducive more. to that sort of oh, thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, like religion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, how important is it for you to maintain intimacy with God, Father? And how do you do so in the business of your day? Particularly when you are young and more energetic and have more responsibilities. You know, the, 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 well, I was going to say the likes of the extension department, but that's a spiritual experience anyway, just to start mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, you, you can't how do you maintain? It, you can't do it without regular contact. I mean, okay. there has to be, you have to have some time, I think, for prayer and reflection every day. Some, uh, and that's where, again, as I said, for me, the daily celebration of, of the Eucharist, uh, whether I'm celebrant or uh, attending that, it's a time of quiet, of, sol of, of prayerfulness, uh, both before and after, and sometimes in preparation for it. Uh, sure. And and more time than that, though, and just some time for quiet prayer and reflection. And uh, another practice we have is a sort of a daily examen to look back over your day uh, mm -hmm. and to see. That's Ignatian, huh? Yes. And well, and then, you know, used by others too, but certainly. Sure. But just to reflect on your day and how give thanks to God for the gifts that you have, you know, received that time and ask for pardon for the times you've messed up and but to maintain a, a reflective life and sure. to be... Uh, Sometimes you can get, and I find that myself, you get so caught up with a problem or issue or conflict or something that it sort of pushes all those other things out. And, yeah. <clears throat> and then you have yeah. a, at least a, a time when you say, oh, I, I've got to get back to this. Okay. So you said preparing for Mass. Is that potentially significantly more than just preparing your homily? Yeah, you're thinking about what you're doing. I mean, okay. what, you know, celebrating the Eucharist. I mean, the, the consecration, the body and blood of Christ present. Uh, so it's, uh, mm. it's, it's much more than okay. just that. Okay. Uh, just, just preparing a homily. I mean, you can have a, I might say, a communion service, uh, which is quite different. Uh, but here, celebrating the, the Eucharist and being able to, you know, mm. uh, so that would put you into prayers before Mass, or, or you, you, you hold this position as far as you can, knowing well, that you're going to say Mass is, is that awareness of what's going to happen yeah. that you are participating in? Yes, yeah, I okay. think that's okay. part of it. I mean, you, won't, you okay. don't want to just run in and do it and then go do something else the next sure. thing on the agenda. It, sure. It's uh, okay. take some it's, it's, it's a laser a disposition. Focus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say it's sort of laser-like, not heavily, you know. Yeah, well, but that's it, wonderful. Huh? Yeah. So that, yeah. That's, that's the essence of your intimacy with God, Eucharist, 
Well, but it's how, at how the, I'd doing? say it's at the core of it. The yeah. core, yeah. yeah. yeah but I mean, <clears throat> there are other moments in the day, uh, oh. things like that happen, or, you know, just going to okay. sleep through your reflector, getting up sure. in the morning, oh, praying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a kind of like regular prayer moments outside preparing for the Eucharist? Yeah. Like you get into the Bible or scripture? Or well, just looking at the, the readings, which are, are very helpful because they go right through. It's not uh, jumping around this yeah. passage. It's not sort of a cut and paste sort of thing where you're looking at, but you go through the, the gospel yeah. of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John uh, in the course of the, yeah. of the years. And, and uh, in your homilies, you always go through the three readings. It's not only gospel. You always do first, second, and third in uh, the gospel. I try to, yeah. yeah. Uh, Which is good. The three are just on weekends on a daily mass. It's just it's two. It's just one. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The time. Mm -hmm. Lovely. <laughs> All right. Now, can you share with us, Father, as generously as you like, huh? a moment of oneness or intimacy with God? Well, I, I think, you know, we sort of mentioned this the other day. Uh, it's not a moment, uh, but it was a, uh, a time, I mean, a, a period of time. I, <clears throat> I was diagnosed with some severe cancer, uh, and uh, doctors said there was nothing more they could do. And then one doctor said, well, there's something new. Uh, we could try it. It's not approved for this kind of cancer. And well, it worked. Okay. And so that experience of going from, <clears throat> you might say, well, this is it, yeah. to now this is really it. <laughs> okay. Know, it's sort of a, uh, it was a, a real transformation. Uh, for how long? I mean, what, what was that? <clears throat> how, how long was that process? It was about three months. Three months. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, and the encouragement and people said, oh, that's really wonderful. Uh, so, it, mm. and it was. Uh, how, so how long ago was that, Father? About three years ago. Well, three yeah. years ago. Yeah. Held up pretty well. Right? Yeah, well, still, still active. I, I, <clears throat> I enjoy your masses. I enjoy your homily. I'm telling you, you're a serious dude. <laughs> if I would consider it a good sense. <laughs> I love it. But of course, I experienced that from the time we were teaching math. You know? Oh, well, that goes way back. That goes way back. So. We won't say yeah, how long. Perfect. Long. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, could you tell our audience how important it is for everyone, not only priests and religious, to have an intimate relationship with God? And can you suggest how to start such a relationship with Him? This is the man in the street. This is your, your host. Well, I, I think to, to start, you, know, you have to have some some time to reflect and a, a little quiet and, and solitude. And I think that's one of the big challenges today that we're bombarded so, so many different media and you go on, everybody's looking at their, mm. uh, their phone. Uh, but uh, can you sit, uh, can you sit on the bus and just be quiet and maybe just look at the people around you and maybe pray for them or just okay. think of, uh, imagine some of the struggles maybe they're going through uh, so in, it, it has to start, I think, uh, with some, some reflection and some, some mm. quiet. You might not be alone or anything, but you can, you can get a little time to, your, to yourself and your own thoughts. And okay. uh, that, I think, is where it has to, okay. has to start in some way. But, uh, and in the same in a, in a classroom, just to settle down, quiet, and oftentimes, I know the Christian brothers had a little practice when I was in high school that every every hour, whether it was in the middle of a class or something, uh, some one of the students was assigned to ring a little bell and just say, let us remember we are in the holy presence of God. Okay. And the class, uh, teacher stopped, everybody stopped, and uh, it, it sort of was an hourly reminder of, okay. uh, of that. And so I think that's one of the places where it, where it really has to start with some some quietness. I say today we're bombarded. So you know, you, you look out the window, all kinds of advertisements, and people are on their phone, or uh, or, or everybody's talking away. Or uh, yeah. So to be able to have that. Would you would you suggest a good habit that you could do on a regular basis that would keep us close to you know wanting more of God? You know, you 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 your intimacy circles around you, correct? So we can understand, but mm -hmm. we, we don't. We don't that's a privilege of a priest. No? But well, for like our lay folks, maybe 
you know, set aside maybe half an hour for a prayer or reading scripture. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be a half an hour. And some people who are maybe, you might say, addicted to the internet, there are little uh, internet sites that have little prayers. Uh, one is called Living okay. Living Space. Yeah. Uh, sure. and, you, and it yeah. just gives you a little uh, series of little short readings, time to reflect and go through. Uh, so there, there's that living space, but uh, you don't need the yeah. internet. There's a lot any. available these days. There are things there, there that, are, that are out there available. Uh, yeah. And just to, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're, uh, if you're on the yeah. radio, just to listen to some maybe quiet music or, you know, rather than the, the heavy beats that can sort of, um, sure. <laughs> sort of take boom, over boom, your, boom, boom, boom. take over your body. Take over your heart. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Father, we, we have to close. Unfortunately, yeah. to come right. to an end. I'm getting signals. Yeah. So I'd yeah. like to thank you. All right. You're welcome. For sharing your journey. And I'd like to thank our audience for tuning in, um, <clears throat> to answering God's call presented by Guadalupe media. I'm Stanley Ramoff. Until we meet again, let's put God first. All the time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>